Welcome to TechWire, a conversation about government, politics, and technology in California. My name is Christina Gagne, and today I'm joined by Lloyd Levine, a former state assembly member and the president of Filament Strategies. Lloyd, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. So you're well known in Sacramento um, as, as someone who's a technology leader um, and as someone who has dealt with technology issues while you were a member of the legislature. Um, but can you talk a little bit about your background for our viewers who may not be familiar with you? Sure. Um, I actually took a kind of circuitous route to get here. You know, growing up for the longest time, I wanted to be a, a surgeon. Um, and then I took chemistry 1A, 1B, and 1C in college, and that disabused me of that notion. <laughs> um, and so I actually became a photographer for a little while. My father suggested, well, why don't you become a medical illustrator? And I, okay, that's not bad. I was good at drawing and painting. And so I became a photographer and then uh, wasn't really good at selling myself, which is ironic. So I actually tried to be a commercial photographer, but wasn't very good at selling myself. So I was working in politics, uh, you know, making money that way and decided to go to graduate school. And at that point I went to graduate school in Sacramento for uh, a master's in public policy and administration and uh, worked in the legislature for a while and then ran for the legislature, which I, is why, you know, not being able to sell myself was ironic because as a politician, all you do pretty much is sell yourself. So, uh, you know, I, I learned how to do that uh, a little bit better. And I've always liked technology. I've always found technology interesting, the cutting edge uh, of whatever it is, whatever generation you're in, whether it's the internal combustion engine, the telephone, cell phones, computers, electric vehicles, you name it. Right now, you know, we're, we're in the middle of the internet revolution, but historically there's always been a technology revolution. Uh, you know, Henry Ford invented the, uh, the assembly line. That was a technology revolution. So I've always found that interesting. Technology being so instrumental to California, it only makes sense that we have legislators that introduce legislation that deals with technology and, and how we're going to legislate uh, and create policy around what's happening in our state. I know that while you remember, you introduced several bills that were very important. It'd be great if you could discuss some of the things that you worked on. Um, well, the interesting thing about technology is it's so broad. So there's so many different aspects to it. So probably the biggest piece of legislation that I introduced regarding technology, at least in the way everybody thinks about it, was some something known as the Digital Infrastructure Video Competition Act, or DIVCA. Um, and what that really did, if you want to cut it down to just the essence, is it sped deployment of broadband in, in California. It allowed competition, stripped away some regulations, really benefited consumers by getting more faster broadband to more people quicker than we would have without it. And the, that's important because the broadband is the backbone. It's like, you know, it's like I tell people, it's like having a Ferrari but not having a freeway to drive on. It really doesn't do you much good. And having a great computer in your house without connection to high-speed broadband isn't really useful either. So by getting that broadband there, it opens up so many applications from Netflix streaming movies or you know, Comcast streaming movies, whoever wants to stream programming. If you tried to do it at slow speeds, you could sit you know, you'd have to start on Monday to get a movie by Saturday. Now you can get these things in a matter of just minutes. Um, and faster broadband speeds will even get you know, beyond that. Things like I talk to people about in the future when you have smart homes, you know, if you really like cooking, I like cooking, if you really like cooking and you see something on the food network that you want to make, you can then later on you know, have a flat panel TV connected to the high speed internet in your kitchen. You can you know, call up the program, push in the shopping list, have, your grocery, have the shopping list transmitted electronically to the grocery store. The grocery store send that shopping list uh, to their delivery person, have all those groceries delivered to your home, and then call up the episode and watch it on TV. You could do similar things in your garage with home improvement projects. You could do something in your kids' room with homework. All of this is going to be enabled by these broadband technologies. And without the legislation that I did, not to, to pat myself on the back too much, but without that legislation, the deployment would have happened, but it would have been a, a, a much, much, much slower pace. Well, that was a great way of explaining um, what is a very complex policy issue. Um, and you recently joined TechWire as a contributor and wrote a piece on legislating disruptive technologies. Oftentimes, um, our legislators, whether here at the state level or the federal level, just don't get it. They don't get the technology, they don't get mobile applications and the things that they're actually creating policy around. It'd be great for you to share some of your thoughts as someone who has been a part of this political process about maybe what direction California should be going with the, in the legislature to deal with these issues. Well, the thing that you most need to do, I, I think, is if you're a technology company interested in technology, is you need to understand that legislators are like everybody else. And that, you know, that, that unless you're really immersed in the technology industry, you don't have a great handle on how some of these things work. 
But when it comes to technology, understanding how it works, I think, is, is paramount to being able to effectively legislate. Um, and I can give you a few examples where it doesn't necessarily work. And I, I remember in an article, my first article for TechWire, I used an example that happened when I was in the legislature where we had a, a piece of legislation to divulge some telecommunications rates. How much are you going to pay for this type of call? And the problem was the cell phone companies had already switched to one rate. The bucket of minutes that we're all familiar with now because it's been around for, you know, 10 years and everybody knows what we're talking about. But back then it was kind of cutting edge and the landlines hadn't gone to that flat rate pricing where you could call, you know, you could call your neighbor once or you could call New York a hundred times and you pay the same amount of money. Um, so there was only one other member of the committee at the time and that was, uh, he's now in Congress, John Campbell. He and I kind of said, well, wait a minute. How is this disclosure going to work when you have one rate? And so that was probably the beginning of my, you know, really recognizing that so many of the things that we're going to start to try and address in the legislature from you know, rate disclosures to today, privacy issues, which are huge. Uh, and I know you specialize in that. So that, you know, that, that's a huge issue. And how are you going to legislate privacy over the internet if you don't understand how the internet works, if you don't understand that servers are located all over the world, what mirror sites are, that if you decide to close down YouTube or prevent YouTube from doing something, and YouTube is a you know, company owned by Google located here in California, that there can be a, you know, a, a, a Saudi Arabia tube or a Palestinian tube, and they can start their own things with their own videos all over the world. So it becomes very difficult to say, well, you Facebook or you Google shouldn't do this because with servers everywhere, the state of California has a, a limit to what it can really do. And if we go too far in the wrong way, we may actually inadvertently, through good intentions, hamstring our own companies here at home and just shift everything overseas. Sounds like communication is critical between the private sector, companies like Google, and the legislature, just to make sure that the policies being created, you know, benefit technology, but also, you know, benefit the public and don't hamper innovation. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, th that education is key. Hands-on demonstrations so that legislators see how it works. You know, walking them through things and and. I mean, as painful as this sounds to a legislator, understanding that sometimes you just can't do something about it. You know, as much as we might want to. You know, for example, and, and this is probably a, a bad example, but you know, we love the ability to travel everywhere. And we have multiple ways of doing it, whether it's planes or cars, but sometimes those planes crash or cars get in accidents. And as much as we do everything we can to improve the safety, sometimes bad things happen and you just can't stop everything from happening. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try, but it means you have to understand that sometimes things happen that are beyond your control. And with technology, that you know, especially at the state level, it's a little different at the federal level, it's very difficult to address some of these issues. And, and, and now, you know, I've gone on for a bit here, but I'll give you one great example. Um, and I use this in the article as well. People, this is 15, 20 years ago, were plagued by junk faxes where you'd set up your fax machine for business and all of a sudden you'd be getting spam as faxes. Um, and the, the, the thing that stopped that, despite legislation attempting to try and stop that, the thing that stopped it most was email. Because once everybody got rid of their fax machine because they had email and scanners, they didn't need the fax machine anymore so there was no junk faxes sent. But we've got email spam instead. And despite the best intentions to legislate, and we do have statutes on the book in California about spam, my spam box is filled every day. It comes from Russia and other countries where they're fishing and trying to engage in financial schemes to, to build people out of money, um, selling fake products, trying to gain access to accounts, all of those things. The most effective thing against those has not been any state law, but it's been Google and Microsoft and McAfee and Norton, the antivirus programs, and the spam blockers, those are what's really helping to eliminate the spam, not the legislation. Well, it's great to hear your perspective on how you know, some of the things that happen in the private sector impact policy, uh, but also you know, there's that old saying that all politics is inherently local, but a lot of it's global, and so just making sure that legislative bodies have that perspective. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure. Good to be here. And thank you to our TechWire audience for once again joining us in a conversation about government, politics, and technology.